Mabu, hi, Kamustika, welcome, how are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. What I want to talk about today is long distance relationship. Is a long distance relationship a real relationship? Something we've talked about on this channel, Love Beyond the Sea, is how long should a Western man wait until meeting a Filipina in person? And by extension, how long should the Filipina wait for him to show up. Today, I want to dig a little deeper and ask the question, is a long distance relationship a real relationship? Subscribe to Love Beyond the Sea where I go the distance to provide a real info about relating well with a woman from the Philippines. Get notifications by tapping the bell, click add to complete the process, and by all means, leave comments. Now, many of the things I say can be applied to um, any woman, woman, so keep that in mind. I can just see someone telling another person that they've been involved in a long distance relationship with a woman who lives perhaps thousands of miles from him and being greeted with incredulity, even though he's so excited. Someone could assume that this is the only kind this guy could get and that it isn't really a bona fide relationship. Before I went down the LDR road to meet my amazing Isa, I may have been inclined to believe that such a relationship really wasn't one at all. Why would I think that? Here are four main reasons, and I am not trying to discourage anyone from going as far as the Philippines to meet a woman to marry, because I did that myself in 2015. Got married very quickly, and we've been married over seven years. I can't believe it. So one idea would be, well, with a long distance relationship, we're talking, 500, 1,000, 5,000 miles or more. The distance is too great to do things together. Therefore, that disqualifies it for being a real relationship. And that's the first thought I had back then. How could someone say they are involved in a dating relationship, something that is normally expected to end in marriage to someone when they almost can never be in each other's company? Personally, I had extended my boundaries at one time out to like 100 or 200 miles as a last ditch effort to find someone. But that was only out of desperation as you know, trying to find someone just wasn't working locally. I felt like a distance this great would only slow things down since I would spend so much time, so much time driving back and forth. This dilemma is countered, though, and resolved to a high degree by webcaming apps like Skype, Viber, Facebook, just to name three, and there are likely a whole lot more. 20 years ago, even if I had known about these apps, I wouldn't have used them because I felt like you had to be sitting right there in front of each other the old-fashioned way in order to qualify for a relationship. Now, if you're having any thoughts about this topic, again, leave comments. There are creative ways these days, like playing games together online, using your camera to go places together. You can watch movies together too. In today's dating climate, these apps narrow the vast distance between two people in a long distance relationship. Now, to me, this isn't ideal. However, in the old days, you needed to correspond with handwritten letters. And besides, using these apps is a great way to gauge how you get along, get to know each other, and decide if the relationship has some potential. There is an aspect of this that I definitely don't like, as in this next one, you can't touch them. You can't hug them, you can't do anything like that. When relying on webcams, you can't end the date with a hug or a kiss. Nothing. I, I believe this kind of communication um, qualifies as dating, but I used to be skeptical of whether it could be considered a, re a real relationship. The more I mused on this, the more I began to believe that there could be a silver lining, and that would be that it's easier to avoid the strong emotions that can result if the Westerner and Filipina are able to have physical contact. Avoiding the sexual aspect should help keep the relationship focused on the experience of being with the other person, learning about them. This leads to my third way I would have been reluctant to define a LDR as a real relationship, which is... The distance is making it safe. While the vast distance helps with avoiding temptation, I believe it stunts growth opportunity too. 
I endorse LDRs, but at some point, some point, the relationship is going to stagnate if the two don't meet in person. And the Westerner will need to take the initiative to visit the Filipina. Within a year or less, seems sensible to me if you know, you're hitting it off. I believe it is at this point where it can cease being real and healthy, as in growth potential and being in the safe zone can be comfortable and fun, but sometimes you don't want it to end. But you have to, you have to meet in person for the growth of that relationship. It's exciting, it's nice to brag about, you know, to your friends, but sooner or later, you'll need to meet her and find out what the two of you really are like individually and as a couple. Is it a match or is it like water and oil? Even after meeting, the Westerner likely won't have the time and possibly the money to visit longer than two or three weeks, not if he is still working. His initial meeting might go well and will surely yield more knowledge of how well suited they are for each other, but I think only being married and dealing with the day-to-day -day stuff with no safety net will get everything out on a table. If they have similar values, they have a good chance of working things out when life hits them right between the eyes with unexpected circumstances. Our faith was what allowed me to ask her to marry her after only 18 days, and she accepted. Then we started the wedding plans and the visa paperwork, and I rushed out to marry her. We've been married for over seven years. Now, another aspect here, they can't meet your family and friends. A fourth way, I was inclined to think these LDRs were dubious, was that your family and friends would like the opportunity to meet the Filipina up close and personal, so it wouldn't feel like a relationship to them either. The good thing today is that the webcam apps can be used for family and friends to meet your Filipina prospect, and phone apps that make it simple. They can then ask questions, get a feel for uh, the person and the relationship, maybe pick up on things the Westerner may have missed. In our case, I had my mother, aunt, and pastor at church come to my apartment at that time and Skype with Isa, who welcomed this opportunity. It worked for us. An LDR is legit, but I believe the success will be driven by the Westerners' intent on finding more than just a pretty face to text with and see on camera. I just think the distance barrier calls for much intentionality if more than a modern day pen pal is the goal. Today, an LDR doesn't carry the stigma it used to. And it is a real relationship if the goal is marriage. It is a viable method to find a wife despite some inherent flaws. That's my take. Let me know if you agree or not, or if you have struggled with the concept of an LDR, long distance relationship, being a real one. Now, without it though, I wouldn't have found my love beyond the sea.